The Digital Service Assistant helps you to repair your system easily, smart and quickly and reduces downtime. Let's take a look at the features. Online Diagnosis In case of a malfunction, the simplest resolution is Online Diagnosis. This enables you to access the machine's Bosch Rexroad control unit directly via wireless LAN and identify the problem. The electronic nameplates give detailed information about the installed components. With the help of a color marking system, you'll be able to immediately identify the defective components. All necessary data and information, such as serial numbers in the displayed parameters, can be found. You can then request the appropriate service. Service options. You can use the documentation button to select the components for which you need documentation. The service app takes you directly to the appropriate documentation, which you can also forward using a link. You can quickly and easily reach Bosch Rexroad service by using the contact button. You can also call the service hotline. If necessary, you can send relevant error data and photos directly to the specialist on the help desk. You have the option to attach the log file from the online diagnosis. You can also forward selected information to the Bosch Rexroad service. A service employee will get in touch with you as quickly as possible. In order to request a repair of your product, select Repairs. You can rank the urgency of your need here. A member of the service team will get in touch as quickly as possible. Spare parts can be ordered easily and directly as well. You can use the code scanner if you have already removed components from the machine. This process enables you to identify every Rexroad product no matter which code type is shown. With the Select Components option, you can make selections from the available list of components and register the product at Bosch Rexroad or add new components. The code scanner is used for this process. As an alternative, you can also manually enter the code. Register your product today and receive even faster and more cost-efficient service. The Digital Service Assistant is now available in the App Store. Here we are, still going strong after all these years 225 and we're so full of life We're so full of life Ooh, this is our time
Hello again, welcome back. I just had my coffee right before the session, so I'm pumped up to begin our second session for the day. And welcome to those who have just joined us. So who here likes food? <laughs> I can see your hands raised virtually, that's why. This very session, I have a huge personal interest because this current session will be talking about food or meat processing in particular. In this industry too, our hydraulic technology supports a few different applications from moving raw ingredients to cutting, slicing, dicing processes. And our speakers from Malaysia and Australia will show you in the next 15 to 20 minutes. So let's welcome them. Let's find out more about hydraulics technology in food production with Leong Jehao from Malaysia and Gerald Norfis from Australia. Hello! Hi, good morning from Jakarta, Indonesia. We're, we'll be talking about food. Thank you very much for making me hungry, Leon and Gerald. Leon, where are you? <laughs> Leon? <laughs> All right, before oh, we talk to Leon, I would like to say hi to Gerald. Hi, Gerald. And Leon here is very enthusiastic. Hello, very good morning. <laughs> You've had your coffee uh, yet? Yes, yes. So, I'm a food lover. Definitely all right. Then. Anything is good for me. Hi, okay. Gerald. Sorry, okay, Gerald. Hello. Hi, hello, Gerald and Leon. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Okay. So, Ina? Okay. So Inga, thanks for your introduction for these sections. Sure, my so pleasure. Let us, yeah, so let us enjoy these sections together now. All right, sure. So take it away. Thanks. So this section is talk about food, like what Inga said. Food is the basic necessity for all of us. Therefore, I would request your increased interest and far relevant to you in these presentations. Always we refer to food, I read quote from the famous American cook. Her name was Jura Chow. She said that people who love food, like to eat, is always the best people in the world. So I quite agree with that. So as a food lover, my name is J.H. Liu a sector manager from Boss Restaurant Malaysia, together with Jared, a sales manager from Boss Restaurant Australia, co-presenting this hydraulic technology in food production. So this presentation, we start with some introductions of food production process, then the hydraulic applications, followed by the finally Boss Restaurant's successful business case in the region. Next, please. So when we talk about food production, it's a process transforming the raw ingredients in the prepared food products. It categorized in two processes normally. We call it primary and the secondary food processing. So for primary food processing, actually it involves slaughtering the animals, cutting the meat, expecting it to ensure it is safe for consumption before its packaging and deliver to customer. Next, please. So how about the secondary food processing? Secondary processing is the transformation of agricultural product into the family product, for example, like sausage, nugget, meat patties, etc., etc. So next, please. So in meat processing, actually hydraulic system is well used. Hydraulic system is used to transport the cattle or the cow to the most optimal position in the standing cage. They also go for the process bleeding, skinning, cut case bleeding. The functional like a half load screw, uh, sorry, such as the in-feed door, out-feed door, 
also like the Rise M4 platform, measuring, measuring lines like shared by our Australian colleague, and also all driven by the hydraulic system. Okay, it's over. So we talk about the secondary process as well. So hydraulic system commonly they generally use in the forklift to transport the raw material and the finished products. A conveyor system not only moves the product and also can sort and distribute them into the different destination. The centralized hydraulic power units is to support the machines such as chopping cutting, slicing, and also dicing system. And most widely used is the mixer and the blender, which require high torque and high force. So before we go into the applications and the business case, I would like to have a leading question to our audience. This will help you to understand the hydraulic technology in food production. So the question number one commonly come up from the customer whether hydraulic fuel would pose the risk to do a food safety, and also what is the application may be used in the food technology, and why using hydraulic technology rather than the electrifying solution, and what is the basic requirement in the food production, and also what is the customer perceived benefit from the hydraulic technology, and finally, what is the hydraulic technology industry 4.0 solution can be applied to food production? So to answer those questions, I will welcome Jerry to give the meat processing applications presentations. Hi, Jerry, the stage is yours. Thank you, Long. Thanks for that. And uh, thank you to everyone for joining us here today. Uh, happy to be a part of this presentation. Uh, I'm Gerald from Bosch Rex Rod here in Brisbane, Australia. And today I'll be speaking to you about hydraulic technology in meat processing. Uh, now, Leon has already walked you through a typical meat works production line. And I'd like to go one step further. We'll break down a few of the applications and um, we can sort of have a look at all the hydraulic technology that you might find in these specific applications. And from there, uh, we can segue into a few examples of solutions that we have provided for our customers and review how they compare to, to typical hydraulic systems within the same application. Uh, with that being said, let's, let's get into it. Well, yep, so on screen, uh, you should be seeing a pretty generic flow plan for a Meatworks. Now, guys, products flow from left to right. Uh, so the cows come in the left side and they leave the right as, as meat, as cuts of steak, where they are dispatched locally and internationally. You'll notice a few of the applications and processes have been circled in red. These are applications where you can expect to see some sort of hydraulic actuation going on. Uh, so starting at the top left, I hope you can read that. It says hide puller. The Hide puller is essentially a horizontally mounted steer drum coupled to a hydraulic motor. Now its purpose is to rotate and peel the skin off of the carcasses. Uh, this skin is carted off on its own journey to, to be turned and tanned into leather. And the carcass continues on down the line to the evisceration and sorting base, which is our next section. Now equipped with hydraulically driven saws and cutting tools, the operators make large sweeping cuts to the cow. Uh, the photo in the top right actually shows a pretty good example. You'll see all the red sections are the usable and consumable meats, and the gray sections would be cut off in this, in this uh, process. depending on their grade and quality of meat. So they could be anywhere between A1 to A5. Uh, the meat is pulled off the production line via a hydraulically actuated 
push-pull cylinders. So these cylinders will reach out, hook onto the meat hooks, and retract and bring them back into line. Um, and after that, the meat will go through a burning room process where it's cut down into saleable parts, so your steaks, your ribs, and from there they're packaged to be chilled. Proceeding further down the production line, we're almost at the end now, uh, the packaged meat ends up in the chilling and freezing room. The freezing usually takes place uh, using what's called a plate freezer or a carton freezer. This is typically a set of hydraulic cylinders connected to a big steel plate. The steel plate is driven down onto the set of cartons to give it a compressive force. And for those of you who know your thermodynamics, you would know that this compressive force actually allows for a much more uniform and quicker freezing of the product, which is, which is desirable uh, when it comes to meat. Now after that, the meat is stored, packed, and shipped off to its distributors on the right. So that was a brief overview. Um, we can now unpack these applications a little bit further and move on to the next, please. Ah, the Ryzen 4 platforms. So you'll notice these weren't actually mentioned on the previous slide. The reason being the Ryzen 4 platforms are present at many stages of the production line. Essentially anywhere an operator needs to go up and perform works or processes on the meat, you can find a, a Ryzen 4 platform. Uh, you can see there's a photo there in the middle at the bottom, there is a set of hydraulic cylinders the hydraulic cylinders will retract to bring the platform up, extend to drop the platform. Now one design challenge we often face in this application is the cylinder's motion. Uh, we've had cases where the cylinder was a little bit too hard on in terms of movement and the platform jerks. And if you can imagine an operator sitting on that platform with um, some pretty sharp tools, it's, it creates a very unsafe work environment and is a very huge risk and liability to the customer. Uh, so yes, we use proportional controls here to, to really, to, to sort of negate that jerking motion. Uh, we can go to the next one. The marshalling lines. So this is actually located in the, car uh, sorry, the carcass chiller. The cylinder will extend out and grab the meat hooks, like I said, and it'll be uh, sorted depending on its quality of meat. Now one design challenge we often face here is the pendulum effect of the carcass. You can imagine the cylinders extending out, grabbing meat hooks and pulling. Uh, if the cylinder is moving too fast, you can actually end up with the carcass swinging around and dangling as it moves. Now, first and foremost, it's a huge safety risk. You now have a large piece of meat uh, swinging uncontrollably. This also poses a problem for the hydraulic system itself, as the swinging force can overpressurize and cause undesirable cylinder movement. So all sorts of bad stuff going on there. And similar to the rise and fall platforms, we try to proportionally control the speed of that cylinder so as not to, uh, to create that jerking motion. So we can give it a nice smooth movement profile and reduce the swinging. Uh, go on to the next application. On screen, you can see a few examples of some plate freezers. Like I said, they are vertically uh, mounted horizontal, sorry, vertically mounted cylinders, uh, coupled to horizontally mounted steel plates. The steel plates will come down and provide compression for the cartons to give you that, um, that uniform. guys are actually in the freezer. One of the crucial aspects of the design is actually the oil grade. Uh, you want to make sure you select a, an oil that is suitable for the operating temperatures being very low. Uh, failure to do so can actually reduce in, can result in reduced efficiency and reduced component life of the hydraulic system itself. Some design challenges we face is the unintended movement of cylinders due to the low ambient temperatures. As you can imagine, the oil will shrink when stagnant for a while, reducing the volume. Uh, one way around this is to actually have a secondary circuit to suck up oil from, like an anti-cavitation check. 
and this will account for the loss of volume due to shrinkage. Uh, if you go into the next one, which I believe is the final application slide, uh, on screen you'll see a few examples of meat processing tools. I'll apologize first because this started out with a lot of burgers and chips, and now we're sort of looking at some uh, a lot of blood and gore, but uh, bear with me. You'll notice that many of the tools on this um, on this slide are actually handheld, and that actually ties into the design challenge later on. The tool sets are split into two, uh, two different kinds. So we've got these saws, which are driven by your hydraulic motors, and the cutters, which are driven by your hydraulic cylinders. So open, close, uh, extend, retract. Now the main design challenge here is actually heat generation. Uh, continuous use of the tools without adequately sized cooling can result in excessive heat generation. So much so that the, the temperature actually conducts all the way through the tool housing and <laughs> onto the, the operator's hands, which is, uh, which is a huge risk and a huge liability to the end customer. Now the most obvious solution here is to suitably size a cooler to account for the heat. And I'll show you a way that we actually managed to offset this problem without a cooler in one of our later examples. Uh, so that actually covers all the applications we, we have to talk about. I'll move on and show you a few examples of alternative hydraulic solutions that we have provided, and we can compare those to the typical hydraulic systems. Uh, so next slide, please. So on screen, you should see the reversible EEPU. Uh, these were designed for the Rise and Fall platform application. You see a picture of the typical Rise and Fall on the left. And in the middle, you see a uh, size comparison of a traditional power unit versus our EEPU. So as you can see, we've been able to reduce the spatial footprint so much so that we can actually mount these units to, to the top of the platform. Not necessarily on the platform, but just above it. It can also be mounted to the roof stacks way, way up in the platform's, um, out, out of the platform's reach. And this is desirable, as this now takes away any risk of accidental tampering or knocking of the power unit, and it puts it out of the way of any harsh chemicals that, uh, that may be used in the cleaning processes at the abattoir. Uh, so if we go into the next slide. So this was developed to compete against the, the pneumatic rise and falls coming onto the market. We've actually managed to snatch a fair bit of business um, back into the hydraulic technologies, and we're now putting out 25 to 30 of these a year with, with projections to go a bit higher than that. So that's fantastic. Uh, one big win for us is that these units actually have a sleep mode programmed into them. Now what that means is as soon as the operator takes their finger off the button, the system shuts down. The, the electric motor stops spinning, we stop generating heat, we stop generating noise. It's a much quieter solution. And like I said, you do away with the, with the big bulky power units because you no longer require any of this cooling. Uh, proportional flow controls are done away with as now the flow is dictated by the EFC drive. So how fast that electric motor spins depends, uh, dictates how much flow you put into the system dictates how fast that cylinder moves. And that also uh, sort of ties in with reducing heat generation as well. Now because we use EFCs and the EFCs, the EFC power units can actually mount to the top of the platform, the supply is a little bit cheaper, but we really save costs on electrical installation. Uh, so that's a huge plus for these reversible EEPUs and, and we've had huge success uh, in the industry, in the market with these. And we're yeah, looking forward to more results. Uh, can go on to the next slide. Yes, so meat processing tools. We have developed a few power units. Um, primarily, this one comes as a, a solution for single and multiple tool uses. As you can see on the left, there's a small little photo. On the right, there's a few examples of the tools it can power. Uh, sorry, next. Up the top there. So, so far we've only got about 10 out of 125 of the market share per year for these. We do have OEMs out there pushing these, um, these products now, and we're expecting some pretty good results soon. 
Now these units, similar to the Horizon 4 EDPUs, use a server motor and an EFC technology to, to run over the gear pumps. Uh, again, similar, it's got the sleep function programmed in, and this will reduce the heat and noise generation. So when the operator takes his hand off the tool, off the button, sorry, he's not generating heat, which can be translated into the tool and cause, and cause burns. Now, it also lowers the operating temperature of the unit to such a degree that we can actually use canola oil in the system, which is a huge, huge plus for us because in the event that there are leakages in, in any case, uh, it is very unlikely to spoil the product compared to typical hydraulic mineral oils. It's also a reduced risk of fire, which reduces the customer insurance premiums by quite a bit. Uh, sorry, we can go on to the next one now. Sorry, and the next one after that. So just a few schematics for your reference for those EEP units and the, the tooling units. Uh, we use, so this particular system will actually drive two separate tools. It can also be used to drive one tool and one platform. So then uh, there again, you've got your space saving aspect. Uh, next slide, please. Similar to that first one, you can now drive either three tools or two tools, one platform, or one tool and two platforms, depending on how big that platform actually is. Uh, next one. Yes, there's a bit of information there on the Citro pack. Uh, this is a typical unit that we have out the back. It was actually the inspiration for our EEPUs and servo-driven um, power units that we just introduced previously. Uh, next slide, please. And one more. So I will now hand off over to Leon and he can discuss the Citro pack in sausage making uh, in detail. Thank you guys for your time yes. and over to you, Leon. Thanks, thanks Kira. I really like the name of Jarvis. It looks like we are living <laughs> in the world of Iron Man coding stuff. This is the first thing I told uh, Jarvis in beginnings. Okay, now we have a look at the Citro pack in the sausage making. He is retrofitting the old power packs with the Cypro family product, Cypro pack in sausage making process. Next, please. So the background of the, this machine is running for more than 15 years with our oil dam VSO 20 XCC with the proportional work control. However, the customer face a persistent problem because the valve is become older. So when they are totaling the proportional valve, he have a very high pressure shock. And also they are used two pumping units to drive the two operations, which is the brand press you can see on the left. And also I can see the lifter is on the right, these two pumping units. So with one side for back, actually I'm able to capture two operations because purely is the difference of the pressures and the flow rate. That's why they use two pumping units. We cycle back with the variable oil flows and variable pressures, I'm able to capture two operations and easy to retrofitting the setup and installation for the customer. So it also has an operations enhancement because the sensor package for the cycle pack, such as the oil contamination sensors, oil level sensor, pressure sensor who give you the actual operating pressures, which is really helpful for the user and also for the maintenance personnel. And one most significant advantage is our early warning fault with the LED indication detections. Customer is very happy with this because previously they have installed the HPU inside the cabinets. So when they need to inspect and also for the servicing, for example, they need to open up the cabinets and visually inspect the oil leakings, filter clocks, oil level, visually. And in the very narrow space, I will see in the middle of the photo. With the LED technology that CyproBank has, actually their user, even their maintenance personnel, is very easy to observe the 4D signal from the CyproBank. 
So to understand their operations, now we play a short video of the sausage making in our custom site. Please play the video, thanks. So next slide, please. So talk about the benefits. Actually, Cyclopad is really a good HPU for replacing the old system. Customer is looking at the variable oil flow and variable pressure for the two, op two operations. So as I mentioned before, the LED technology is very, very useful for the customer and also help them in the maintenance because they don't need to open up the cabinet. They can look at the LED light as a very early to diagnose for the HPU. And also, this is industry 4.0 ready HPU. So which is can be for customer future developments of using both restaurant and audit condition and monitoring for the system. So next, please. So another success business case is in the food processing. The customer is supplying the food product to the McDonald's. Both restaurant has supplied six production, food production processing line to the customer, including retrofitting the old HPU. So next, please. So the general HPU specifications, a tank volume with 3,000, and with the three units of air for VSO 250 coupled with the 45 kilowatts motors. they operating at the pressure of 80 bar and with the offline cooling system in the grid in the system. Other than that, most restaurant Malaysia also provide the service for the piping installations, who install the pipe ranging from the three quarter inch until the four inch steel pipe and the stainless steel pipe in the productions which also including the oil flushing, oil cleanliness test, and the pressure test. Next, please. So there is, they are using a centralized hydraulic power units. Hence, the possible leaking for the hydraulic power unit does not contaminate the food in the production. Next, please. So, this photo, you can see that there's a private installation lay inside the production floor. And actually to support the mesh machine for the forming, for the frying, the oiling, and also for the conveyor side to the other packaging. Next, please. So we we'll talk about the benefit in this customer. Because our centralized HPU and also the the, the hydraulic motor used for the conveyance system is provided very easy for them to change the food processing layout in the plant. Although they are not always change the processing layout, but however, they have a new, different products or R&D research and development of the new product and need some change on the layout is provided a very easy way, convenient for installations. As usual, we know that hydraulic is always give you the consistent torque and pressure for that. So now we have a short video for the hydraulic power unit in the customer side. Actually, we can see that they are processing the meat testing 
for example, you enjoy the mac chicken or mac beef. Also, the mac cheese mixer and blender. So this we call the cooking stations. Because after the cooking, they will convey, convey out all the products to another next process. So thank you. This is end of my Angera presentations. Thank you, Leong and Gerald. You guys probably want to head to McDonald's right after this, huh? <laughs> Hold your cows. <laughs> I mean your horses for just a little bit longer while we engage in some Q&A. So go ahead. Type in your questions in the Q&A box. We, and by we, I mean you guys, Leon and Gerald, will be happy to answer them. Of course, our meat guy and our sausage guy is still here, <laughs> ready to answer all of your questions. Okay, while we wait for all of the questions, I want to ask about uh, the advantage of using hydraulic technology in food production. What exactly is that is? Gerald, Gerald. Gerald? Okay. Hydraulic technology is uh, mostly because they consider it's a powerful hydraulic motor and hydraulic cylinder, which provide a very consistent torque and the force. And uh, actually, I have another one advantage because cleaning and sanitation is very important in the food industry. So, if compared some of the Electrifying solution, they need to have a very proper protection on the electrical side. But for them, they are using a high pressure water jet with a chemical with some hot water, which is hydraulic motors, is they just plug off or they just leave it there, they, they just wash the machine and sanitize it. So uh, this is mostly the very good benefit by using hydraulic technology. Question about that, uh, whether hydraulic fluids are safe to use in the food production? Because you just mentioned about the safety issues. Yeah, this is always a common question. So like we can see some example from Canola Eye with the Cyclonics uh, operated by our Australian colleagues. Uh, also, there is some hydraulic with the food grade that can be used in the food production. But however, to be honest, because even the hydrocanola oil or the food grade oil, he may contact with the machine part, it will cause some dirty on in the oil. So proper machine design still always the best way to avoid his leaking into the machine, the food or contaminating the food as well. Feel free to contact Bosch Rexrod for any maintenance. <laughs> okay, this question is uh, to Leong. Do you support a retrofit from standard HPU to Citro Pack? And is there anything we should consider before choosing Citropac? As we know, Citropac has a small oil tank. Okay, definitely the oil tank is very important. It's depending on operation that requires a large volume of oil. For Citropac, it's 20 liters. The oscillating is around uh, 12 liters, for example. So it's important you have to consider the tank size. And as well as we want to see what the benefit from Citropac compared with the old ones because he can have a variable oil flow and also variable operating pressure, which is can be catered fuel operation, but also very important is it depend on your oil volume as well. Thank you for your answer. Now I'm going to ask to Gerald. 
about the upcoming hydraulic technology trends in food production. Maybe you could share more about it. Sure. Uh, currently call it upcoming hydraulic technology, to be honest. We have noticed um, a bit of a shift more towards electrification, mm -hmm. starting to gain a little bit more traction. Um, for example, one such inquiry we've had from a customer is to move to electromechanical cylinders um, in lieu of the hydraulic push-pull cylinders that we, we spoke about previously. Uh, but luckily, you know, Bosch Rexroff does have a factory automation side and a linear technology side, and we actually do offer EMC technology to, to customers who need it if, if that's, that's the way they'd like to go. So the trend, of course, is electrification, right? Okay. Yeah. The next question for Gerald is from one of our audience. In our food applications, we have A10 VSO pumps for the pineapple production processing. So the main problem is the hydraulic fluid. Do you have any fluid to recommend? The main problem is the hydraulic oil. Did I hear that right? Yeah. The pumps is A10 VSO for pineapple yeah. processing. So any fluid recommendation? Sorry, I seem to be misunderstanding. Is is the um, the oil contaminating the product? Is that is that what I'm hearing? Uh, because the main problem is the hydraulic fluid that uh, they are being used. Do you have any fluid to recommend so the pumps could work uh, more effectively? Uh, it's a bit of a hard question to ask. I need to know a bit more about the system, like operating temperatures, and, and that kind of feeds into oil viscosities. Uh, so, but yeah, you, you try and use a food grade oil, I guess. As long as it's, it's food grade oil, yeah? And maybe for our audience asking this question, you could easily ask our expert that is standing by to help you with your problem. But maybe, Leong, would you like to add something about the problem that this customer have? Yeah, uh, like, like what Gerald have mentioned, actually the oil is always the concern for the customer when it's a lot oil leaking. So although I would say in, in earlier, you're using hydraulic food with the food grade uh, can be used in the system, but when it's leaking to the food, it's also not recommend to co continue your productions because it's in contact with the machine and the so machine design still uh, uh, one concern there from my side always ask customer how the machine design to avoid the oil leakings to the food to contaminate the food production in the long run. And Leong, the next question is for you. What is the critical consideration when using hydraulic technology in food production? Uh, the critical side, I would say that uh, firstly the cleaning and sanitation, especially now is a COVID period. So they need to wash the production floor, all these things. So the critical things you need to consider is whether he's easy for wash or he have need to additional protections on the power packs or, or on the electrical power. And another one thing is uh, the critical is also the HALA certifications. Because in food productions, they also have a HALA certification and non-HALA certifications. So when there is a HALA certification, they need to comply certain Sharia law, law to, to comply with no, no pay, uh, no pork, no, no alcohol, for example. So this is, must be taken into consideration when you go to the customer, whether they are HALA certifications or non-HALA certifications. Okay, thank you, Leon. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Gerald, this question is for you. What are the most common HPU for meat production at the moment? HPU. Um, it really depends. You know, every single application in an abattoir is, is almost essentially required. So you need the hide pullers, you need the power units to, to do your cutters. Uh, in terms of volume, you'd probably find a lot of power units on rise and falls. You'd probably find a fair few power units on the plate freezer side, because um, typically in abattoir, applications, there's one power unit to drive multiple different actuators. So you might find that a push-pull application has as many cylinders, but only one power unit. So it's, it's a difficult question to answer, and it's dependent on, on end customer needs and requirements. For further inquiries, kindly contact our partner connected to our event today. Uh, next question to Singapore, Li eh, Malaysia, Leong. <laughs> Where can we get help? Yeah. To convert all system. 
where can we get help to convert old system using PV7? <laughs> okay, depends. Actually, depends what is the technical spec. Uh, it's also uh, uh, it depends on what you are operating conditions. It doesn't mean that everything can be replaced by psychopack, psychonics, but as well. Important to contact the boss restaurant. We can give you a professional advice. Sure. We would like to remind you, uh, watching today's event, kindly put your questions on our future Q and A feature. Feel free to ask about uh, anything about the food processing technology. And of course, we value your feedback so much. Uh, later on, we'll be having a polling session. But for now, I would like to ask uh, to Gerald. So Gerald, about the services. What services can be offered along with the supply of Bosch Rexroth Hydraulics in the abattoir industry? Yes, so uh, here at Bosch Rexroth, we do believe in a cradle-to-grave solution um, in terms of the hydraulic systems. So what we actually offer is after the design and supply, uh, we actually offer to come and install and commission the, the power units on site. And you know, we'll deploy one of our experienced service technicians from the team, and they'll come up, um, hook everything up, make sure it's all. That is being conducted at this very moment. So after we all have our piece of meat, <laughs> let's meet again here on Rexroth Live at 2 p.m. Singapore time. The afternoon session will focus us more on electrifying and connected solution that has become a necessity in today's world. So end-to-end -end connectivity, Bodus Connect for mobile machines and our connected hydraulics that are powerful, compact, and efficient. So in Bosch Rexroth, we move, you win.